right, well, I'm Chris. That's it. Let's talk about stuff. All right. So we're head over to our classic Warrior Horses site. And we're going to take a look at a view we've taken a look at before. We're going to take a look at a couple of options with it. So if we head on over to our aquatic assets, as we all know, horses are uh, worldwide and most of the world is covered in water. And you may not realize that um, horses uh, control that territory as well. So let's go over to our aquatic assets where they track uh, the various things they have in water and so on. So this is a giant list. We've used this demo before. Uh, just to kind of illustrate this uh, this sample, which is a sample, I'll show you a link to the sample in the end. And the idea of that sample is it's dynamically drawn based on row index, right? So you can see it's getting deeper and deeper the further we scroll down, right? Regardless of sort and everything until eventually we get to a submarine and a horse. How exciting! Right, again, that is a sample that's available to you. We'll link at the end. And it's less the point, although I do have a reason for choosing this. We'll come back to it. So... Let's say we've got this beautiful list, and we literally do. All right, I'm going to zoom that in just a little bit. Now, if I want to add, you know, so if you see I've got this comments, right? So that's cool. I can see that I've got comments. So if I click that, I can come in here, and we can do comments. And if you haven't seen this yet, it's awesome, right? If you open up the form, you want to see them, you hit this little comments button. I had a comment that says that horse minds, not hose minds, horse minds are best minds. Dang it. All right, and we'll just comment that, right? And that's great. And now we have this lovely uh, comment icon here, and that's cool, right? And we can see that we've got one there. We come over here to like uh, Laser Shark 956, you know, and we just say lasers. We're having a very intelligent conversation. Sharks, right? Wowee. Right, but the whole idea is we've just got some comments that are happening here. And now if we look at here, we can tell which items have a comment. Uh, by the way, if you don't see that uh, the very first time you comment on an item, you'll need to refresh for whatever reason. But if you hover over, you can see it's one comment or it's three comments. There you see in the tool tip there, three comments. That's cool. But uh, what if we want to do something with that, right? We want to actually use that in a format, say maybe the title field is uh, hidden, right? So we're going to show hide columns and we're actually going to just take the title field out of there right so that's where that shows up ah now we have no way of seeing which one do we have arbitrary comments on it's very sad right so we can add this thing here and now i've shown you in the past the idea of if you just want to apply a format right the tip here is choose a calculated column with this kind of old school interface when i chose more there i'm just going to call this thing format feeling very creative and I hit equals and double quote double quote and that creates this empty calculated column. And the reason we've done this in the past is because then you can apply format here. It shows up in display, but it's going to stay off of your edit form. Now, uh, some of the reasons for that are no longer true, and we'll take a look at that as well. But in the meantime, let's take a look at what we can do with this format. So let's format this column. I'm going to go to advanced mode so I can just write this JSON myself. All right, so we've got a lovely schema thing. And now let's add, uh, say, an Elm type of div because we want a box to contain everything. All right, and in this case, because I happen to know what we're building, I know that I'm going to want some children, so I'm going to want some child elements here. All right, and we're going to say this one, we're just going to make another div. All right, and in this case, let's set some text content. So now we're actually at it. So what if I want to get how many comments there are, or know if there even are comments? Well, lucky for you, we can reference the stuck any other internal com column. It's underscore comment count. So if we use that and we preview, aha, the ones that have those comments or had comments in the past, right? So I had a comment here, I deleted it. It went down to zero, are gonna show this number now. So we have a value in the comment count field. So, hey, I can use that, right? We can start doing some stuff with that. Uh, so what if I wanted to be a little more explicit, right? Like that's cool, that one shows zero, but it's a little confusing because this one doesn't show zero and it's because no one's ever added a comment and then removed it. So let's just do a couple things here. Let's make that a little easier to see, right? We'll come to the end of that and we'll add a style. That sounds exciting. We'll enter there. And we're gonna type in uh, font size. We're just gonna make it a little bigger so we can see it. In this case, we're gonna say uh, 16 pixels should do her. Let's preview on that. Uh, it's pretty much right there. So now we can see it a little better. But now what if we wanted to do things like work with this? So we want to show zero. So what if we said equals and we say if and we'll just say if comment count, all right, then why don't you show the comment count? Ooh, comment count. And if that is not a value, in other words, it doesn't have a value, why don't you show zero instead, right? So let's see if we can 
try that out. Bam. So now we have an entry for everywhere. So that's woohoo. Very exciting. Now, what if we want to make that a little fancier, right? That's cool that we've got arbitrary text and we can use that in all sorts of different places. What if we want to go a little fancier? I told you we needed children for a reason. All right. In this case, we're going to add another child. Make sure we add our comma there. And in this case, we're just going to put another div. So another box. We're going to put it above, right? And in this case, we're going to say uh, style because we want to give it a font size as well. We're going to say font size of 36 pixels. We want this one to be a big one because we're actually going to make this an icon, right? Attributes, and we're going to say that. We're going to say icon name because we're going to pull out an icon. These are the Fluent UI icons, and we just reference them by name here. And in this case, we're just going to say message. Now, if I preview that, right, that looks a little weird, but we have this beautiful comment thing. If we want the actual icon they use, by the way, you can just switch this from message to comment. If we preview that, you'll see it's got the little quotes in there. Now, for our cases, I don't want that, um, and I'll show you why. Uh, so I'm going to go back to message so that I get an empty version of that. And now I'm just going to do a couple things here. I'm going to change it around. So let's change out our style slightly. So I'm just going to come down here to this guy, and let's change out. Let's put a width and some positioning and everything else. So I'm just going to copy that so we don't have to watch me type it. I'm just going to paste this. This, by the way, is a sample that uh, is open source and free and available to you, and I will show you the link within the end. So what I've done here is I've now taken this second box and I've positioned it absolutely, right, so that it goes above that icon, right? So now I've got this wonderful icon, right, that shows uh, the actual comment count right in there because uh, I've hidden the title field or I didn't like how that worked, right? I always wanted to show comments or maybe I want to do, you know, a little fancier where I'm going to take a look at the, the comment field itself so let's go back up to our attributes uh, for the main parent element. Let's add some attributes here. In this case, we're just going to say, hey, if the comment count is greater than zero, right, which will be, it won't be true if it's also blank, uh, then show it in the theme color. Otherwise, kind of fade it out a little bit because we don't need it to be very prominent. Let's preview that. There we go. So now we've got them in that nice horse brown right here for when they actually have comments and so on. So you can see we could actually do a lot with that, right? We could conditionally show uh, actions if they have comments, right? Draw people's attention to the fact that there's a real discussion happening here behind the scenes. And we do that all by referencing this kind of hidden column. It is not a column you can just add when you go to that show hide columns. You can't just get an arbitrary comment count. So you will need to use formatting if you want to use that value in any way. Okay, so that's cool. Very exciting. I'm going to just save that. And you know, we can do things like we switch to a tiles view or gallery view. We switch to that, right? We'll get this kind of default out of the box. You'll notice our format has nothing in it because it's a calculated column with a uh, value of almost nothing. But if I format this current view, if I switch to advanced mode, I've got basically nothing. I've got to go in hard mode. But if I go back to design mode, I hit edit card, then I switch to advanced mode. Hey, look at that. They did it all the work for me, right? So that's exciting. I'm going to just randomly increase the height here. Uh, let's go 25, just because I know what I'm about to do. Preview that so it gets a little taller. But if I scroll all the way down here in this format, there's a couple of things I want to point out. The first is you'll notice there is a P tag here. So we can actually do a paragraph tag now. Um, you'll see that the uh, schema still doesn't say it's allowed, but if you inspect the element, you'll find out that indeed you can now pass uh, the P tag in as the element type. Um, that may be very helpful to some of you. Uh, but one of the things I want to point out here is instead of this format, which is trying to just get the value of the format, right, we're going to do that trick we did a couple of weeks ago when we showed it, which is the column formatter reference. And in this case, we're just going to say our format column. All right, we're just going to reference it that way, and we'll hit preview. And I've done, oh, and you'll see now. Look at this. This is interesting. See, it's showing the format, but now we've got the the actual numbers floating way up to the top. You know what's happened here. Now, I'm going to save that. We'll come back to fixing that in a minute. All right, so what happened here? Why does it look different here versus when we're not in that view, right? So when I'm here, it behaves correctly. And in fact, we're going to see another problem here. So if I open this up and I look at the form, in the past, format-only fields would not show up here. Now they show up with this, this is a read-only field, but they don't show your format. So just calling that out, it's a bit of a pain right now. So one of the things you can do is for these, right? If you still want to use these or if you have used them in the past, you can hit edit columns. So I'm going to take my format and I'm just going to uncheck it. All right, and then we save and no longer there. 
But what if I also want to see it right now? So I'm going to arbitrarily copy it right now. So column settings, I'm going to format this column. All right, I'm just going to grab that format that we did before. And I'm going to swap over instead and just use the deployed column because it already exists. And we're going to hit advancement. I'm just going to paste it in there just so we can see it show up on the form. Preview that. Now we have the exact same format. The reason I'm showing you that is because if we click on it, we have the same problem we were seeing on those tiles. You see that one, if we look really closely, is up here by deployed instead. So we have a difference in how those are being handled. So what's happening is the parent element that's inheriting styles um, is different when it's in the row view versus when it's in the form versus within the tile. So what you're going to want to do is test, right? So make sure you're testing these things. Uh, so what we can do is we can just edit that format. So column settings, I'm going to format this column again. And all we're going to do is up on the parent, we're just going to make sure we set some base styles that match the base styles that's already getting in the row. So we get those that same thing. So in this case, I'm just going to add a style tag. And what I need to do is I need to add a position of relative and the height is 42 because the height here, the row is going to be 42 pixels, but when it comes in the form, it's going to be based on what your format is. So because we made this icon 36 pixels, it'll be 36 pixels and it'll make our little number here not be centered and then we'll be sad. There'll be so much tears and crying. All right, so let's do that. We're going to save that and then we're going to swap over to our format just so I can show that it's fixed in the tiles view. So let's save that. So now when we look here, hey, look at that. That fixes that. So again, we have to kind of set a baseline uh, on some of those properties. So test to find out what you actually need to correct. And you'll find that if we swap over to the tiles view, uh, once again, now that we've corrected that, it's going to be corrected as well. So that's an important kind of distinction. Uh, one other thing, the reason I pull up this particular list is to point out that in the form, you can see this boat is based on only drawing in row index of four. And yet it shows here. All right, if I pick a different item, all right, you can see now it's the blue. So the idea here is the row index in the form is still going to come from the row index it was when displayed. All right, so now this one's a row index. So if I'm sorting this by that date, all right, you'll see that everything changes here. But it, the picture still draws because it's based on the order. So even though this doesn't have a comments anymore, it's still going to draw there. So all that to say, I throw a bunch at you to point out that there is a real difference between what's displayed here in the form um, and what is displayed uh, in a tiles view and so on. So just be aware of those. Now let's swap back over to our slides. That is not how you do it. There we go, slides. Okay, so first up that column count, empty with no comments is the total number of comments. There's also a comment flags. You just reference like any other column. And then form considerations. So again, those formats are not gonna show up the way they used to. Uh, that row index is still going to work. This is the big one, though. So the format is not aware of the render surface. So when you do your format, you don't know if you're rendered in the web part. You don't know if you're rendered in the list, you know, the list view, uh, mobile device. You don't know any of those types of things. You have you have some indication of like layout size at time of render, uh, but that's about it. So what you want to do is test everywhere, right? So the inherited styles are going to differ at times. So just look at it in multiple spots to make sure that your format is fully covered. You don't want to be surprised when that uh, when those numbers float to the top. All right, and there we go. So there are some uh, samples out there. So that sample that shows how to access the comment field um, and show how to kind of render that with that absolute positioning is available. And then if you are interested in that uh, submarine drawing for whatever reason, uh, that is also available to you and you can check that out. All right, that's it, that's all I got. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Chris. Always entertaining uh, stuff for sure.